We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Last week, if you remember, I told you that the love relationship between husband and wife pictures the loving dynamic between the father and the son, and that is found in 1 Corinthians 12. That's what I told you. That you find that the love dynamic between the husband and wife illustrates the love dynamic between the father and the son, and that you find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I was wrong. It's not there. It's not there. It's in actually chapter 11. Chapter 11. Let's read it. Let's read it. And it's very important. This authority structure that is in God himself is vitally important. Chapter 11, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. It is important for marriage. It is important for the society as a whole, I would argue. But here we go. Verse 2. Now I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I deliver them to you. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a wife is her husband. And the head of Christ is God. Do you see that? The head of the wife is man. The head of man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. It's all there. And it fits perfectly the thought that our marriage relationship illustrates the relationship between Jesus and the church, right? The head of every man is Christ, and the head of Christ is God. The loving authority between the father and the son is to be displayed between the husband and the wife. Pretty clear. Man and woman. All right, now. Not only is it within the, 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 the husband-wife relationship that this relationship within God is to be displayed. It's, we go back to uh, Genesis 1, and that's really clear there as, as well. God said, let us make man in our likeness. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And obviously, if there is this loving authority relationship within God, the Trinitarian God then that should be displayed in the husband-wife relationship. Yep, there it is. And now, by design, according to Scripture, that relationship is to be modeled, is to be pictured, not only in the husband-wife relationship, but within the authority structure of the church as well. Authority structure of the church. Now, here I bring in another controversy, because right now here we talk about women wearing head coverings. There are many churches that wear that call women to wear head coverings. I'm not trying to judge any of them. And I'm not trying to, any churches that do use head coverings and any churches that do not. Our church does not. But what I'm asking is whether you use head coverings or whether you don't use them, understand the meaning behind the head coverings. Understand the basic meaning behind the head coverings. And the basic thought is this, that the head covering is a symbol of male authority over the woman. That's right. Male authority within the church context, that's the teaching of the scripture. Male leadership, have male leadership in the church and have the women exemplifying this, embracing the male leadership, wear head coverings. Men Provide loving leadership so the women recognizing that leadership might flourish under that leadership and exercise all of the gifts they have been given, listen, including teaching. Yes, even preaching. Oh, Pastor Paul, now you've overstepped. You've gone a little bit beyond. Have I? Have I, though? I think if you read this, you cannot escape the thought that Paul is addressing the church context. It's really, really clear to me that he's talking about the church dynamics. And within the church, women are called to pray publicly 
And yes, some of them will be called to teach slash preach publicly, but always with the recognition of male leadership under the protection of, under the authority of male leadership. Where do you find that, Pastor Paul? Verse 4, every man who prays or prophesies, right? Public prayer, public teaching slash preaching, I think would at least be included in the prophesying right there. With his head covered, dishonors his head, which we were just told is Christ. But every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. Yes, in context, her husband, but also I think it would not be a stretch to say that this is in principle referring to the male leadership in general that is in the church, since it is the same as if her head were shaven. So it says here, every woman who prays, every woman who prophesies, when she does these things publicly, she does it under the recognition of male leadership, if there's a husband in the picture, under the authority of her husband. So ideally, if the husband is going to the same church in the same congregation, she, he is supporting her and encouraging her. Along with her husband, however, whether or not the lady actually has a husband, she is recognizing that she is praying under the authority of the church, the male leadership of the church. I think that's what this is, what is going on here. And as long as we keep that principle, it is not that important, at least this is our position, whether you are actually wearing a head covering or not. Even the hair, it says here, would qualify as a symbol of having authority uh, over you as a woman. So it's, a, it's the principle that is important, that is vital, and that must be kept. And when that principle is kept, then true flourishing can happen within the church. And how beautiful is that, right? It is not a denigrating thing for a woman to recognize authority over them, male leadership, and then for the men to recognize that they too are under authority just like their wives, and that they are equal with their wives, that the men and women are equal in the sight of God, just the difference in roles, just as God the Father and God the Son are equal, but just a difference in roles. Isn't that good? Isn't that beautiful? Let's live that out. Let's live out the dynamic of the Trinity. I just said that dynamic that exists within God. Yes, from eternity to all of eternity. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and many other places. In the scene of eternity, we see Jesus bowing to the Heavenly Father. Yes, authority structure exists within God himself, even though he is equal within the Trinity. Equal, but difference in role. And that is expressed everywhere, isn't it? In, in, in today's society, certainly, we would not say that the husband is any better than the wife or the boss any better than the employee. But the difference is the difference in role, not in essence. In essence, we are equal, but we, 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 we uh, function and perform different roles, all for the building up of one another to display the beauty of our head, King Jesus. Let's celebrate him in all that we do, our voluntary submission, mutual submission to one another. And this, by doing that, displaying the beauty of the love of God, the wonderful organization of the love of God for all the world to see. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we live in the world that bucks against authority. That, that is so true. Everywhere. I think about, I'm not, I'm not sure if it still is, but till very recently, the number one song in America that is um, 
mainly a complaint, a complaint from start to finish regarding the government. I wonder how much of that is based on truth. Well, I, even though on the large part I would agree with all of the parts of that song, Lord, I wonder if a part of it is just like that we like to complain. <laughs> we like to complain against any authority over us, including yours. So, Lord, help us in this very short span of time. Yes, things are unfair. People abuse authority. But to embrace authority, not just because authority is good, but because authority comes from you. It's part of who you are, the love dynamic of our triune God. What a higher calling you have given us as believers to submit to authority. Far more than just your better life here, because things just work better when there's organization. But the higher goal of displaying the beauty of the Trinity for all the world to see. Ah, oh, make that a reality among us by the power of your blood poured out through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before the world began, you were on his mind. And every tear you cry is precious in his eyes. Because of His great love, He gave His only Son, and everything was done so you would come. Nothing you can do could make Him love you more. Nothing that you've done could make Him close the door. Of his great love, he gave his only son. Everything was done so you would come. Come to the Father, though your gift is small, broken hearts and broken lives, he will take them all. So you would come, come to the Father, come to the Father. Though your gift is small, what gifts? Broken hearts and broken lives, He will take them all. The power of the Word, the power of His blood. So you would come.